Deacon Roger Hunter, and I've been asked to uh, submit a, a subject or two for the continuing series of uh, mystagogy. And uh, I want to talk about sacraments. Um, the sacrament in particular today is anointing of the sick. But I'm going to go back and start with uh, just a basic definition of a sacrament. And I'm old school, so I'm coming from the Baltimore Catechism. I knew, I know the new catechism has a better and bigger and more broader definition of a sacrament. However, uh, I basically know that a sacrament has outward signs. They were instituted by Christ, and they give grace. Uh, the sacraments are given to us by God, and it's God being present in our lives when we need His grace the most, whether it's at baptism or marriage or confession or the Eucharist to continue our daily life in grace. Now, in the Catholic Church, we celebrate seven sacraments. The sacraments of initiation, that is baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. The sacraments of healing, confession or reconciliation or penance where we're forgiven of our trespasses and the sacrament of uh, anointing of the sick. And that's the one I'll talk about. The other two sacraments are vocation, matrimony and holy orders. So the next few minutes I want to talk, I'll talk about uh, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And I'll talk about maybe Another session, one or two of the other sacraments. Now, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick may be our most misunderstood and maybe not used as frequently as needed or should or could be. The sacrament was called before Vatican II last rites or extreme unction. It was and still is the last sacrament we will receive before dying, but since the sacraments are for the living, the name is changed to anointing of the sick and then more often received for illnesses rather than death. Its roots are in the book of James, where we are told that if anyone is sick, to call the presbyters, the priests, they will pray over them, lay hands on them, and anoint them with oil. And if the sick person has committed any sins, they are forgiven. So during the sacrament, the, the, the outward signs are laying on of hands or praying over the person and the anointing. And, uh, of course, the person receiving the sacrament has to be in the right disposition, and et cetera. I want to give two examples of the application and what this sacrament does or is and how we reacted to that. I have a friend who was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and about four or five weeks before her surgery date, I told her that uh, I asked her if she had been anointed and she said, well, no, I didn't know we could do that. So I said, well, be sure you will receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick you'll be amazed how what kind of peace and comfort that gives you of joining whatever you encounter with that of what Christ went through on the cross. And whatever pain or suffering or illness you have will be really a piece of cake. So the day of the surgery came, and just by chance, I went to the hospital to be with her and her family, and I asked her if she had been anointed. Well, she said no. The, the priest never got back with her, or she never got a hold of the priest. She got all kinds of excuses. So I made two phone calls, one to a priest, and he must have been saying mass because it was about that time in the morning. But the other one I called was at the hospital within five minutes. Anointed my friend, and she went to surgery. And to this day, she reminds me, she thanks me for that suggestion, and she reminds me of just how peaceful and comfortable and resting in the peace of God she was going into surgery. I want to tell you a little couple stories about me, too. 
um, back in 86 or 87, I was uh, in the operating room, and I had a little cyst to be removed from one of my fingers. And as I, the hand was numb and the surgeon was ready to go, but my heart rate was such that they weren't going to touch me just yet. Um, so a nurse came around to my other, took my other hand, and we talked. I don't know about what. I don't remember how long, but uh, long enough anyway. I got my heart beat down, and the surgery could proceed. Of course, that time I did not receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick before I went. I didn't realize I could. Well, fast forward to January of 1998. I'm laying in my hospital bed up at Mayo Clinic, literally dying, but I'm waiting for a possibility of a new liver, for a liver transplant to occur. And about a week or so before the surgery, uh, before, I was uh, thinking, they, they told me about all the procedures and steps and what's going to happen during the operation. And I got to thinking about my surgery on my finger, because the only surgery I've had was my tonsils, cyst on my finger, and a liver transplant. So I figured that this surgery, the liver transplant, was going to be probably a little more serious than the cyst on my finger. And if I was a piece of cake, a, 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 a worried to death then, I would be a basket case going into surgery if and when the, the liver became available. Well, sure enough, on January 5th, about 8.47 in the morning, the doctor and nurses came in. We chit-chatted a little bit. They told me a liver had become available, and I was scheduled for surgery at 4 o'clock. Well, then I had a couple, three things to do. First and foremost, was to thank God for his healing, because immediately I knew I was going to be okay. Secondly, of course, I had to tell everybody here, because everybody here was praying for my healing, and God answered prayers. And third, but not least, I had to be anointed. So he called for the priest, and about 2 o'clock he came in, he prayed over me, he anointed me, he heard my confession, and at 4 o'clock I went into the operating room. I cannot begin to tell you just how peaceful, calm, quiet, relaxed I was going into surgery. I woke up the next morning about 7.30, 8 o'clock-ish, and I really felt good. Of course, now I was on a morphine drip, but I felt good. So I recommend two things. When you are sick or when you are ill or when you are scheduled for a procedure, please call for the priest. Please pray for your healing. Take all your pains and aches and ailments to the foot of the cross. You will be amazed at just how peaceful you are. Thank you for listening. We'll talk some more about sacraments. May God bless you and may you always be well. We'll see you next time.